Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this complete journey, we're going to learn all about Next.js. Next.js is one of the most popular framework in the market. In this course, we will learn many new concepts just like single file components, server rendering, automatic routing, static site generation and server site rendering, API routes, layouts, authentication and many more. We will learn all these concepts one by one. So let's first understand what is Next.js. Next.js is a flexible react framework that gives you building blocks to create a fast web applications as you know you can use react to build your ui and then incrementally you can add off next.js features to solve common application requirements such as routing data fetching integration and so on all while improving the developer and the end user experience next.js has many useful features just like fast refresh zero configuration image optimization Repaging, built in support for CSS, file system routing, TypeScript support, and many, many more. With Next.js, you can work with front end and back end at the same time. But before you join this journey, make sure you have the basic understanding of JavaScript and React framework. If you don't know about React and JavaScript, then I have a dedicated course on it. You can find the link in the description. Now, if you know how React works, then Next.js is just like React. Next.js is a framework built with React. So we need to first understand the difference between React and Next.js. React is a JavaScript library for building interactive user interfaces. It means it creates elements that user can see and interact with on screen. React provides helpful functions to build UI, but leaves it up to the developer where to use those functions in their application. Building a complete React application from the ground up requires some effort. Many developers need to spend time configuring tools and reinventing solutions for a common application requirements. That is where the Next.js comes in. Next.js is a React framework that gives you building blocks to create a web application. Next.js handles the tooling and configuration needed for React and provides additional structure, feature, and optimization for your application. You can use React to build your UI and adopt Next.js features to solve common application requirements such as routing, data fetching, integration, and many more. Whether you are an individual developer or a part of a larger team, you can leverage React and Next.js to build a fully interactive, highly dynamic, and performant web application. Enough theory, let's dive into the real world examples. To set up the Next.js application, Make sure you have Node installed in your local system. Node is a JavaScript runtime. With Node, you will get NPM. NPM is a Node package manager that allows you to install Node packages in the JavaScript projects. So you have to head on nodejs.org and you have to install the current stable version of Node. I already have Node in my Windows system. So I'm going to open my VS Code terminal and here I'm going to execute a command called node V. This command is going to check that the node is successfully installed or not. Here I'm going to get a version of node. If I want to check that the npm is installed or not, I can simply say here npm hyphen v. So once you have node installed in your local system, just close this terminal and open an empty folder inside the VS Code editor. I'm using VS Studio Code throughout this course. I already have an empty folder inside this VS Code. To open the empty folder, just click on the files and select open folder. I already have a tutorial folder here you can notice and now inside this I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name this folder next course I'm going to name this folder next.js course let's first create a next.js application with CDN to understand how the next.js application work so inside this next.js course I'm going to create a new file I'm going to name this file index.html and then I'm going to add exclamation mark here and press enter. This is simply going to add HTML5 snippet inside this index file. We also need to add a link tag for icon, something like this. Then I'm going to specify here title for this app. I'm going to say Next.js CDN. Just out of that, as I said, Next.js is a React framework. So what you have to do is you have to import two libraries, React and React DOM inside this project. So you can easily create different react component in the project you can just head on to the react website so just type for react and head on to reactjs.org 
and click on the get started from here you can get the cdn links just click here and copy both these cdn links and i'm going to paste that cdn link in this head section something like this now once i have both this package react and react dome we need to import babel as well because react use jsx to create component and react use babel to transpile that jsx component into javascript for that we need to use babel as well so i'm going to just type here babel cdn so I'm going to search for Babel CDN. Click on this cdnjs.com. Copy this Babel script and paste that right here. Now, once you have React, React Dome, and the Babel, now I can create a React component inside this index file. So what I'm going to do is inside this body right here, I'm going to create my root component. So I'm going to say here div, and I'm going to specify ID to it. ID is going to be root, or you can specify ID app now i'm using this division tag to append all the components just out of that right down here i need to add a script and this is a type of text babel or you can use text jsx as well that's upon you both are identical i'm using here text babel now inside the script let's grab this division tag so we can append all the components inside this div i'm going to say constant app is equal to document dot get element by id and then we pass id here app so now once we have this division tag i can append all the component inside it so let's create a new component here so just for the example if i create a component called home page something like this and inside this i'm going to return jsx so i'm going to create here a return div and inside this div I'm going to create a one heading tag and then I'm going to say like counter and save these changes. Just out of that, just down here, I'm going to say react dome dot render. As you know, with react dome, you will get render method. So you can render your component. Inside this, you need to first specify your component name as a first parameter and then you have to specify the main root component or you can say the main app component so i'm going to pass here this app variable here and just out of that inside this bracket i'm going to specify my component name something like this that's it this is a simple react syntax now let me save these changes and run this index.html file in the browser i already have an extension in this vs code to execute this index in the browser which is live server I'm using this live server extension to run this index file in the browser. If you don't have this extension, make sure you install this first to run your index file in the live server in the browser. I already have this live server installed, so I'm going to just right click here and say open with live server. This is going to start the development server on the port 5500. So you can see the live server is going to execute the index file and I'm going to have here a text called like counter. If you want, you can add state inside this home page. For example, right here, if I want, I can simply add here constant likes set likes is equal to react use state. And then I'm going to specify default value to the state, which is zero. And then I can simply specify here that variable likes. And to increase the value of this variable, I can simply add here a button with the text likes and then to increase the value of this state, I can simply call here on click event. And then I'm going to specify here a handler function, the inline handler function. So inside this, I'm going to say set likes, likes plus one. I'm going to just increase the value of the like by one every time when we click on the button. Now, let me save this back to my project. And now when I click on this button, you can see. I can increase the value of the like by clicking on this button. Now, this is a very simple React application. We just imported two modules, React and React Dome, and we use here Babel to transpile the React code, or you can say the JSX code, into JavaScript. Now, what I want, I want to convert this app into Next.js using NPM. Instead of using CDN, let me show you how I can use Node Package Manager to install all these packages in the Node module directory and create Next.js application.
Now, once you understand how you can create and set up the React application using CDN, let me show you how you can use NPM to install all these packages and create the Next.js application. So what you have to do is you have to open your terminal and you have to enter into your project directory. So I'm going to say CD next course and then I'm going to execute a command called NPM init hyphen Y. This command is going to initialize this folder as NPM package. When I press enter, I'm going to have the package.json file which initialize this folder as node module package. Let me clear the screen and then I'm going to execute a command npm i for install and then I'm going to install react, react dome and next. I'm going to install all these three packages inside this application. So I'm going to press enter here. This is going to install all these packages inside a node modules folder. So you can see we have here a folder called node modules. And inside that we have all these three packages let me clear the screen and then let me close this terminal now if we just take a look at this index.html then you can notice to add a react component we need to add both these modules and to transpile the js6 code into javascript we use babel here if you are using next.js you don't have to worry about babel you don't have to worry about transpiling your code into javascript so let me just remove your code from this index.html file let me set up the Next.js application using NPM. I'm going to remove all these three packages. Now, just out of that, we also don't need this app component because Next.js will automatically import all your component inside a div. So I'm going to get rid of this division tag like this and this statement, this React DOM render statement. Now, we only have the JS6 code remaining. So instead of having this boilerplate code inside this index.html, I'm going to remove that right from here. And I'm also going to remove this script tag. Now we only have the JSX code. What I have to do is I have to convert the file name. So instead of index.html, I'm going to just rename this file to index.js. Or you can specify the file name JSX as well. And if you're using TypeScript, you can specify TypeScript file name as well. I'm using JavaScript. So I'm going to say here index.js. Right now, you're looking at the JavaScript code, right? Now, what you have to do is, as I said, you don't need this app component. So let me get rid of this statement. Now, there are three more things you need to do to fully transition to the Next.js application. We have to move this index.html file in the new folder called pages. Next.js will automatically identify this file if this file is in the pages folder. So let's create a folder inside this next course. We need to specify folder name pages. Make sure the name is exactly the same. We have the pages folder and inside that we need to move this index.html file. So I'm going to grab this and move that inside this pages folder. Something like this. So now we have this index file inside this pages. Now, because Next.js use pages folder as a route path, we need to put all the components files inside the pages folder. Later, we will look at how we can use this pages folder in more detail. Just out of that, you have to add a default export to your main React component to help Next.js distinguish which component to render as a main component of this page. So, here you have to add export default. So, this is the default export from this. So we pass here export a default function home page just for that let me save these changes and now you can see inside this code we don't need to add here react use state instead directly import a file at the top here i can specify import use state from react and instead of this react.use state i can just simply specify here use state something like this just out of that, I'm going to save all these changes back to the package.json and here I'm going to get rid of this test command and then in the double code, I'm going to say dev, the development command and then I'm going to specify next dev. Save these changes, open the terminal and here you have to execute this dev command. To execute it, you have to specify npm run dev. When you press enter, this is going to start the local server. You can see we have here a message called started server on 3000 port and this is the url of your server you have to just click on this link when you click on it 
this is going to open the localhost 3000 and you're going to have your first next.js app when you click on the like it will increase the like counter like this and if you notice inside this console you will get all the console messages now whenever you save your file next.js will automatically recompile your project so if i remove this counter from this h1 heading tag and save these changes and if i back to my browser you can notice the browser automatically updates to reflect the changes this feature is called fast refresh that's it you successfully created your first next.js application next i'm going to show you how you can create the next.js app using command line interface you can see how easy it is to set up the next.js application but this is not the way to create a next.js app the easiest way to get started with next.js is by using create next app command this cli tool enables you to quickly start building a new next.js application so if you want to create a new next.js application you have to open your terminal and i'm going to open the tutorial empty folder inside this terminal you can see and then i'm going to execute a command called npx create next app and then i'm going to specify here the latest version so i'm going to specify here at latest and then i'm going to specify the name for this application i'm going to choose the name for this application next app if you want you can choose any name for this application that's upon you so i'm going to press enter to create a new next.js application here to create the next.js app you need to install this create next app in your local system so just press y for ok and press enter this is going to create a new folder it will take less than a minute to create this complete application if i open the next app you can see we have bunch of folder and files here inside this next application let me explain one by one but before that let me first enter into my project directory and execute a command called npm run dev so i'm going to say here cd next app and then i'm going to execute a command called npm run dev don't worry you already have this command in the package.json you can see so i'm going to just say npm run dev when i press enter this is going to start the next.js application and here you can see you have your application on the localhost 3000 this command is going to start the next.js development server and you're going to have your application on the localhost 3000 don't worry you can change this viewport according to your need if you open the localhost 3000 you can see this is a starter template page which shows some helpful information about next.js now let's make some changes inside the code you can see this is a complete next.js project you have different folders here let me explain each folder one by one first you have a dot next folder next build is a command which build the project which gives you the dot next folder containing all the build content which actually need to be deployed on the server so if you are deploying your next application on the server this folder is useful then we have here node modules folder inside these node modules you have all the dependencies just after that you have here pages folder inside these pages you have api and two files all the routes of your next.js application will be placed inside this directory for each route you will have a separate file for example let's suppose you have here about.js file inside these pages and then if you type about.js in the url you will get that file inside your browser don't worry we'll look at that later in this course the default file is used in this project is index.js so if you open localhost 3000 you will have this default file which is index.js just for that inside these pages you have api folder this folder contains all the code we need to access the api of our application if you are working with backend this folder is completely useful just for that we have here app.js file later we'll look at more about this file just for now just leave this file as it is and move to the next folder which is public next.js use this folder to statically serve files just like robot.txt or favicon.ico in this folder we can add all the images or the asset of the project just for that we have the styles folder the style directory is an addition to the scss file 
I like to place all my global style like variables or utilities in this directory. So you can see you have here two files globals.css and home module.css. We will look at how you can use these files later. Just out of that, you have here a file called eslint.js. ESLint is commonly used for linting modern web applications. This file is useful for linting your project. Just out of that, we have .ignore file, which is the git ignore file to ignore this node modules folder. And then we have next config.js file, which is the configuration file of next.js. Then we have package lock and package.json file, which is the node files. And then at the end, we have readme.md file, which is the git readme file. Now let's make some changes inside the index.js. And let me make some changes here. Instead of welcome to next.js, if I say learn next.js, when I save the changes, you can see that will update this file and you will get the result in the browser. You can see inside this file, you have the style sheet as well home.module.css. The CSS is used as a module. And using this style, next.js apply the style sheet just like object and properties. The class name is equal to styles.container. Now the container is a class name in this module file. If I open this file, if I open the home.module.css, then we have a class called container. And the next.js is use that container as a object property. And this is how you can easily specify styling in Next.js. Later, we'll understand how you can style the Next.js component. But first, let me explain how you can use these pages in the Next.js application. Now, I hope you're familiar with Next.js folder structure. Let's take a look at how you can create a new component and how you can use this pages folder in the Next.js application. Website and web application generally have many different pages. In Next.js, the page is a React component exported in a file in the pages directory. Pages are associated with a route based on their file name. For example, you can see inside these pages, we have this index.html. The index.html is the default route for your Next.js application. It means if you open the localhost 3000, the index.html is going to represent the root route. If you create a new file, inside these pages just for the example if you create a file with the file name first post dot js then this file is represent the route call first post and if you put this file in a folder for example if you create this file in the post folder and then you specify file name first post dot js then this is going to represent a route call post first post you all know when you create the next.js application you already have the index.html file this file represent the root route let's create a new folder and create this first post.js file inside that let me get rid of this command scroll up and then inside these pages here i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to name this folder post and then i'm going to create a new file inside it i'm going to name this file first post dot js that's upon you you can specify any name to this file just out of that here i'm going to export a default function a route or you can say a component in next.js is just a default export function here i'm going to say export default function i'm going to specify name of the function first post and now from this function i'm going to return a simple jsx so I'm going to just return h1 heading tag with the text first log post. That's it. I'm just going to return an h1 heading tag from this post. Now let me save these changes. Keep in mind the component can have any name, but you must export it as a default export. Now just out of that, let me show you how you can display and open this component in the browser. You can see the name of the file is first post and you have this file inside the post folder so let's open the localhost 3000 and specify here route path posts forward slash first post when you press enter you can see you're going to have your h1 heading tag this is how we can create different pages in the next.js application the path of the file became the url 
This is similar to building website using HTML or PHP files. Instead of writing HTML, you write JSX and use React components. Let's add a link to this newly added page so we can navigate to it from the home page. When linking between pages on website, you use anchor HTML tag. As you know, when linking two different pages, you use anchor HTML tag. In Next.js, you use link component. If you back to the index.html, here, if you want to link two pages, instead of using this anchor tag, you use link component. Link allows you to do client-side navigation to a different page in the application. So, for example, let's suppose I want to specify here my first post link. I'm going to get rid of this statement and then I'm going to add here a link component. To add the link component, you need to first import that. So, at the top, here, you specify import link from next link from the next library you call the link component and then you pass that link component right here so if i specify here link something like this and then i'm going to specify here some title to it learn next js and then if i specify text here go to first post and in the link you have to specify the address so to the href property you need to specify the address here I'm going to specify double quote and then specify the route path. So I'm going to pass here forward slash post first post. Now you don't have to specify localhost 3000. Let me save this file back to my component. I'm going to open the localhost 3000. Here you can notice I have here a link go to first post when I click on it. Now this link is going to open my first post. The link component enables client side navigation between two pages in the same Next.js application. The link component enables client-side navigation between two pages in the same Next.js application. This shows that the browser does not load the full page and the client navigation is working. Next.js does code splitting automatically. So each file only loads what's necessary for that page. That means when the home page is rendered, the code for other pages is not served initially. Now what if you want to change the heading of the page? So if you open the first post, then you can notice the heading or you can say the title of the page is your file path. What if I want to change this? To change this, Next.js provides a component called head. Using this component, you can change the title, the meta information, and you can also add links to your web page. So let me just add that. So you can see, to use this head, you need to import next head inside your component. So I'm going to copy this and export that right here and inside my component right here let me grab this add here empty bracket like this and then i'm going to add my head component here so i'm going to say here head inside this head just for now i'm going to specify title title is going to be next js first post let me save these changes back to my browser and as you can see i'm going to have here a title next js first post so that's super easy right to specify title to your pages you can add the head element in any route notice that the head is not in lowercase because this is a type of react component that is built into next js this component allows you to modify the head of your page now you are not limited to only add styling inside this head section you can also add third-party script in the head section. Script that need to be load and execute as soon as possible are usually added within the head of the page. Just for the example, if you want to add jQuery in your application, you need to first add jQuery and then use it. So you add jQuery in the head section. So if I just copy and paste the script tag here, then this is also a valid statement. You can add here a styling, you can add a script tag here and so on. You can also use Next.js script component. So if I import here script from Next.js script, then I can use a script component inside this head section. A script component is just an extension of the HTML script element. And this is optimized when additional scripts are fetched and executed. So if you want to use this script in your head, you can just add here a script like this. And then you specify your source. You can also add strategy, lazy on load, and you can also add an event which is on load so you can do a lot more thing with this component this strategy controls when the third-party script should load 
the value of lazy load tells Next.js to load this particular script lazily during the browser ideal time. Then we have onload. Onload is used to run any JavaScript code immediately after the script has finished loading. Just for the example, we log a message to the console that determines that the script has loaded correctly. So this is how we can use here and create a component inside Next.js application. Let's take a look at how we can use assets in the Next.js application. Now let's take a look at how you can handle static assets like images in the Next.js application. Next.js can serve static assets like images under the top level public folder. Files inside this public folder can be referenced from the root of the application, similar to these pages. The public directory is also useful for robot.txt, Google site verification and any other static assets. Let's create a new folder inside this public. Let me create a new folder here and name that folder images. You can specify any name to this folder and then I'm going to put image inside it. I'm going to locally copy and paste an image inside this folder. So I'm simply going to copy and paste one image inside this images folder. Here you can notice I'm going to copy and paste the Next.js logo here inside this application. Now with regular HTML to use this image, you will add img tag with source and alt attribute. To the source, you specify the image path. This ensures that your image is responsive on different screen sizes. If you want to optimize your image, then you have to use the third party tool or the library. And if you want to load the image only for the specific viewport, then you have to do some extra work. Next.js provides an image component out of the box to, to handle this for you. Next.js image component is an extension of this HTML image. Let me just first import that right up here. So if I specify here import image from next image, then I can use this image component instead of this image. This image component is just an extension of HTML IMG element. And this is only involved for the modern web. Next.js has a support for image optimization by default. This allows for resizing, optimizing and serving images in the modern formats when the browser is supported. This image component avoids shipping large images to the device with a smaller viewport. Instead of optimizing image at build time, Next.js optimize image on demand as the user requests them. Let's take a look at how we can use this image. So instead of this IMG, we pass here image component. This image component. And now if you want, you can get rid of this closing tag and pass here forward slash. Both are identical. And inside this, you can specify different properties to it. Just like source. And inside the source, you specify the path of your image. As you know, to use image in your React application, you need to first import that locally. For example, at the top, you need to first specify import. Then specify the image name. For example, if I specify here Next.js from and then specify the image path. So you pass here double dot slash then specify the public folder and then specify your images and then the next.js dot png file and then you use this next.js inside this source let me get rid of this script tag let me save this now you can see you have your image in the browser but you can see we actually use the local path to import that image instead of using local path you can also use remote images to use remote images in Next.js, the source property should be the URL string, which can be relative or absolute. As I said earlier, public directory is a top level directory. Files inside this public can be referenced from the root of your application. So instead of this local images, instead of importing these images locally, we can simply specify here, single quote, and then we can specify forward slash here, images, and then specify next.js.png. Let me save this and back to the browser. Here you can see I'm going to have an error message. Unhandle runtime error. The image with source must use width and height property or layout field property. Whenever you use remote images in the Next.js application, you have to specify height or width or layout field property to this image component. 
because Next.js does not have access to the remote files during the build process, you will need to provide width and height manually. So just out of this source, here we pass width, which is 300, and height is going to be 300. Now let me save the changes back to the browser, and you can see I'm going to have my image. In Next.js, images are lazy loaded by default. One of the ways that images most commonly hurt performance is through layout shifting, where the image pushes other elements around the page as it loads in. This performance problem is so annoying to the users that it has its own core web vital called cumulative layout shift. The way to avoid image based layout shift is to always size your image. This allows the browser to reserve precisely enough space for the images before it loads. Next.js solves this problem with image optimization and with height and width property. Or implicitly you can use layout fill which can cause the image to expand to fill its parent element. In some cases, if you are accessing image from the source without knowledge of image size, there are several things you can do. You can specify layout fill property to it, normalize your image or modify your API calls. Let me show you how you can use the first step. So instead of width and height, you specify layout fill. The fill layout mode allows your image to be resized by its parent element. So the size of the parent element will be considered the size of this image. Let me save these changes back to the browser and you can see the size of the parent element will be the size of the image. So you're going to have the result something like this. Now I hope you understand how you can work with image component in Next.js. Next, we will look at how you can work with CSS in Next.js. One of the common things you would normally do when you start a new web project is to reset or normalize your CSS. So there is a uniform starting position among browsers. This is a perfect example of using global CSS without worrying about scoping. If you open your Next.js app, then you can notice just out of this public folder, here you have the style directory. Inside that, you have two files, global CSS and home.module.css file. Inside this global CSS, you have all the global styling of your application. If you're not worrying about CSS scoping, then you can specify all your styling inside the global.css file. Global style can only be imported in the app component. If you open the pages and this app.js, here you can notice you have the import statement and Next.js import the global file inside the main app component. And keep in mind you can only import the global CSS inside this app component. And this is directly logical because this style will apply to all the pages and components in your application. The reason that global CSS can't be imported outside of this my app component is that the global CSS is affect all the elements on the page. My app component is the starting point of the Next.js app. Later in this course, we'll learn more about this My app component. In the global styling, if you open the global.css, here you can notice we have a different global styling here. Now, let's suppose that you want to specify font family to all your application text. To do that, you can just simply copy and paste the import link of Google font inside your global CSS. Something like this. I'm going to copy this link from the Google font website. And then just down here, I can simply select all the components and all the descendant components. And then I'm going to specify font family pop-ins and then specify the fallback value. So this statement is going to specify this font family to all my text. Let me save this. And now if I open my application, you can notice I'm going to have this pop-in font to all my application text. Now we are not limited to only create a .css file inside Next.js. Next.js also allow styling with sas file, with .sas or with .scss file. But if you are using sas inside Next.js, make sure you first install sas in the project. So you have to first open your terminal, open a new terminal, enter into your project directory. So you have to say here cd next app and then you have to specify a command called npm i for install and then specify sas. This is going to install SAS in your Next.js application. Now, once you have SAS installed, you can use SAS in this project. Let me show you. If I open this style folder, and inside this, let me create a folder 
with the name sas and inside this let me create a new file style.scss now there are two different ways you can create sas file with SAS SAS extension and with SCSS. With SAS, you will create CSS with indention, and with .css, you will create SAS with CSS like syntax. So I'm going to create here .scss file, and inside this, let me style my component. This one, I'm going to style this H1 heading tag. So let me first specify here a title. I'm going to specify class name here, title save this back to the style sheet here i'm going to specify h1 dot title and let me specify font size to it which is 29 pixel and i'm going to specify color as well color is going to be the hex value i'm going to specify color here like this save these changes back to the first post at the top right here to use this styling you have to import this file so you have to say here import styles from and then specify the style sheet so we specify double dot forward slash then specify double dot again then specify forward slash specify styles and then inside that you have sas folder and inside that you have style dot scss so you specify that extension as well now let me save the changes back to my application and as you know we specify styling to the first post so we first head on to the post folder and then open the first post component so when i press enter this is going to open my first post component but you can notice i'm going to have an error message here if i click on inspect and if i inspect in the console i'm going to have an error message here global css cannot be imported from files other than the custom app component as you notice here next is consider this styling as global css so Next.js only allows us to import this styling inside the app component. So then how we can style the specific component? Next.js provide a very important and easy CSS module to style Next.js component. CSS module is a component level CSS that comes built in with Next and can be activated by naming the style file with the .module.css extension or you can say .module.scss extension. You just have to specify dot module and the file extension let's take the same example instead of creating the file called style.scss we rename this file and we add here a dot and then specify here module and then i'm going to leave the extension as it is so now the file name is style dot module dot scss that's it now i press enter now this is going to create component level css now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get it off everything now i specify sas folder and inside that i have style module dot scss now let me save the changes open my browser now you can see i don't have any effect to this h1 heading tag this is because if you want to use this styling to your component you have to specify the, the next.js styling syntax so instead of just specifying this title you have to call here this object and the title class name so instead of this title here inside this curly braces you specify styles this object and then specify here a bracket and inside that bracket you specify the class name which is the title back to the application and reload it you can see i'm gonna have my color to my h1 heading tag so now the styling is successfully applied to my component now, instead of doing this there is one more simple way to, to specify this class to the, this h1 heading tag you can just simply get rid of this bracket and then specify here dot and then specify the class name which is title that's it and you will get the same result so now we successfully specify the css module to the component now you're not limited to only create these css files inside this css folder if you want you can create this style shade this scss or css file inside this post as well inside this post folder now there is one more way to use css inside next.js application like global css and css module style.jsx works with next.js without any extra setup required style.jsx is also a component based css we use the internal mode of style.jsx here by passing the jsx prop to the style component 
For example, let's suppose that we want to style this h1. We simply specify here a component called style like this and then to this style we specify here jsx something like this and inside this we specify curly braces and inside this curly braces we use backtick something like this and then we specify style to the component so for example if i specify here styling title this is a class name and then i'm going to copy this specify that right here something like this let me just increase this font size and now if you want to apply this class to your element instead of this style title you simply specify here in the single quote or in the double quote title when i back to the browser and reload it i'm going to have my result what i want so you can see the style jsx is also used for component level styling i'm going to recommend you to use css module to style your component instead of using this style jsx you can just simply pass here curly braces then specify style dot title now if you can take a look at the html in the browser if i open here elements open the body inside this div right here we have this h1 heading tag you can notice here we specify the class name title to this h1 heading tag but in the elements we get style title underscore and the unique value this is what the css module does it automatically generate unique class names as long as you use css modules you don't have to worry about the class name collisions so every class name you use with css module will automatically rename and have the unique class name nextjs code splitting feature works on css modules as well it ensure the minimal amount of css is loaded for each page this result in a small bundle size css modules are extracted from the javascript bundle at build time and generate .css files that are loaded automatically by nextjs you can use any style according to your need. We'll learn more about CSS later in this course. One of the important thing in Next.js application is layout component. Layout component can be shared across all the pages. You might wondering, whenever you create a new page in this page folder, you have to specify the heading and the footer for that page. Is there any way to solve this problem? Yes, it is. Using layout, you can solve this problem by specifying the default heading or the footer for your page. Or you can even specify the default content for the page using layout. Let's take a look at how you can use layout in Next.js. Inside these pages, right here, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name this folder layout. And inside this layout, I'm going to create a new file. The file name is layout.js. You are not limited to specify only layout name to this file. You can specify any name to this file. That's upon you. Let me just close all these unwanted files. And I'm going to create a new layout here. So you just need to export a default function. So I'm going to say export default function. And the function name is layout. You can specify any name here. That's upon you. And inside this function, I'm going to return a division tag. And just out of that inside this div i'm going to say layout now just out of that i'm going to back to my index.html now you can notice this is my default index.html file let me get rid of all this content from here because now we are changing few things inside this file so let's get rid of all this code and right here inside this return statement i'm going to add my layout so we need to first import the layout so i'm going to say here import layout from layout layout.js if you don't want to confuse with this part you can change this folder name now once you have your layout you can just import that right inside this return statement something like this so now once you have your layout here i'm going to simply call the link and inside this link i'm going to say go to first post and to this link let me specify href attribute which is going to be post first post so now using this link we can navigate to the first post component let me save these changes back to my application and you can see i'm just going to have here a text called layout you can see inside this layout we have here a link i wanted to print this link and specify the default heading for this page so instead of just specifying the h1 heading tag inside this layout you can just call a parameter here to this layout 
to print these children. You have to tell Next.js that inside layout you have children and you have to print the children as well. To do that, you have to back to the layout.js and here you pass a parameter children. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this children right here. So I'm going to say here children. Let me save this back to my project and you can see here I'm going to have my children as well inside this index file. Now let me just specify some style to this layout. Let me get rid of this h1 and to this div right here I'm going to specify some style. So let me just create a new style for this layout. So inside this layout folder I'm going to create a new file and name that file layout.module.css you can see how I specify name to this file layout.module.css because we are creating CSS module so we pass here extension module.css inside this layout module here I'm going to create a container and inside this container I'm going to say margin is going to be auto text align center display flex and justify content center let me save this back to the layout and here to this div we specify that styling so at the top we need to first import that style so i'm going to say here import styles from and then we specify dot order slash layout module dot css if you want you can use sas as well that's upon you and to specify styling to this div we specify class name and in the curly braces we specify style dot container something like this you can see i'm going to have my text at the center of the document now let me just put this text inside the h1 heading tag like this and now let's suppose that you want to change this title you can see the title is localhost 3000 you want to change this title and you want to make this title home so you back to the layout dot js file and at the top you first import head component of next.js and before this children right up here you call that head component and in the title you specify home or you specify your own title to this layout save this back to the project and you can see you have your home title here now let's suppose that you use this layout for this first post component what i'm going to do is i'm going to import this layout and use the styling of this layout to this first post so i'm going to just add this layout first at the top i'm going to say import layout from the layout file and import layout.js and i'm going to grab this layout and instead of this bracket i'm going to put this layout here something like this now let me save the changes and open this first post so if i try to click on this go to first post i'm going to just navigate to my first post and now you can notice i have everything at the center of the document because we have styling to the layout component and inside that layout component we have this content now the title is next first post this is because inside this first post layout we, we have this head component if i remove this head component right from here i'm going to have the default title which is home so if you want to change the default title you can simply use the head component inside your page save this file now back to the index.js when you build your website you probably have your header your main section and the footer of the website so as you can see in this layout we have the head means we can specify title to the pages let's create header component here so i'm going to create an html header something like this and after that you have the main section for your website and then you have your footer so in most of the website you will have header main section and the footer now let's grab the children and put that in the main section inside this header i'm going to check that if it is the home page then print the home page header otherwise print the other pages header so let's suppose that you have two different headers and you want to display the home page header only for the home page and the other header for other pages to do that you can just simply pass here a parameter just pass here a comma and i'm going to name this parameter home that's upon you you can specify any name to this parameter and inside this header in the curly braces i'm going to say home if i have home if i have value inside this home then print the true value something like this otherwise print the false value now inside this first true value 
I'm going to add a to one heading tag and then I'm going to say home page header. And in this false value right here, I'm going to add a to one heading tag again and then print other page header, something like this. And if you want, you can do the same for this footer as well. Now, let me save these changes and show you the result first. Back to my project. And as you can see here, I'm going to have here other pages header. If I back to my home page, I'm going to get here other pages header and my text. Now, what if in the index.js here, I'm going to pass value to this home property or you can say to this home parameter. In the index.js, if I pass here home, that means this layout is for home. When I save the changes back to my project and you can see here, I'm going to have here home page header. This is because now I'm specifying that the layout is used for home. And now we specify value to this home parameter. So this first true value is going to be executed. And if I back to the first post, I'm going to have my header of other pages. So we can have two different headers with the same layout. Layout is very useful for structuring your website because when you have header, main section, the footer, the sidebar to your website, you can easily manage that with layout. Practice with this code to understand how layout work in Next.js. Now let's talk about Next.js pre-rendering. So what is pre-rendering? Next.js pre-render every page. This means that Next.js generate HTML for each page in advance instead of having all done by client-side JavaScript. Pre-rendering can result in better performance and SEO. Each generated HTML is associated with minimal JavaScript code necessary for that page. When the page is loaded by the browser, JavaScript code runs and makes the page fully interactive. Next.js has two forms of pre-rendering, static generation and server-side rendering. The difference is in when it generates the HTML for a page. So let's understand static generation. Static generation is the pre-rendering method that generates the HTML at build time. The pre-rendering HTML is then reused on each request. So in pre-rendering, you first build the app for production, generate all the HTML and then reuse for each request. Once the HTML is rendered, JS will be loaded. On the other hand, we have server-side rendering. Server-side rendering is the pre-rendering method that generates the HTML on each request. So when you make the request, your request is handed over to the Next.js and then Next.js generate the HTML for the user and then serve that HTML to the requested user. The same process will happen over and over again on every request. But why pre-rendering is important and used in Next.js app? If you build a React application before, then you had noticed that the React is loaded once the JavaScript is completely loaded in the browser. And if you have a big JavaScript bundle, then it takes time to load a component. It first going to load all the JavaScript in the browser and then display your component. Pre-rendering solve that problem. It render a component and HTML first and then load the JavaScript. Your component is interactive only when the JavaScript is completely loaded. Importantly, Next.js let you choose which pre-rendering form to use for each page. You can create a hybrid Next.js app by using static generation for most pages and using server-side rendering for other pages. So what do you think? Which one to choose? Next.js recommend using static generation whenever possible because your page can be built once and served by CDN, which makes it much faster than having a server render the page on every request. If you want to make a marketing website, blog post, e-commerce product listing, you can use static generation. And on the other hand, and if your page display frequently updated data and the page content changes on every request, you can use server-side rendering. It will be slower, but pre-render page will always be up to date. Now, once you understand the basics of pre-rendering, let's take a look at a difference between static and server-generated pages. So let's start with the static generation. Static generation can be done with and without data. All the pages you've created do not require fetching external data. Those pages will automatically be statically generated when the app is built for production. For some pages, you might not be able to render the HTML without first fetching some external data. Maybe you need to access the file system, 
fetch external API or query your database at build time. Next.js support this case. You can call it static generation with data. So how does it work? In Next.js, when you export a page component, you can also export an async function called get static props. Let me show you that function. Inside these pages, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name this folder components. And inside this, I'm going to create a new file home.js. And inside this, here I'm going to export a sync function with the name get static props. In Next.js, when you export a page component, you can also export an async function called get static props. Get static props runs at build time in production. Inside the function, you can fetch external data and send it as a property to the page. So let's suppose that you have home component inside this page, then you can get your data from the API or from the file system and return that as a property to this home component. Get static props allows you to tell Next.js, hey, this page has some data dependencies. So when you pre-render this page at build time, make sure you resolve them first and pass all these properties to the page and generate that HTML. Let me show you a very simple example of get static props. Inside this home.js, I'm going to first create this home component. So inside this home, let's suppose that I'm going to render JSX inside this parenthesis. I'm going to pass here empty bracket and I'm going to say h1. Inside this h1, I'm going to print the post data. So I'm going to call here post.title. I'm going to print title in this h1 heading tag and in the paragraph, I'm going to print post dot description. Now I'm going to get this data from the backend. Using this get static props, we pass value to these variables. So what we need to do is we need to first get rid of these props right from here. Pass here object and then passed post. Now just after that, inside this export function, this export async function right down here, we need to first get the data from the backend. Right now I don't have any backend. So I'm going to just create an object here and paste that something like this. Now consider this as a backend request and you get the data from the backend inside this data variable. Now once you get your data inside this data variable, you're just going to return that data as a props from this function. So instead of this triple dot, I'm going to pass this data over here. Let me just change the name of this variable. I'm going to say here post and I'm going to just pass this post data using these props. So here I'm going to get rid of this triple dot, pass here an object and here I'm going to pass my post data. I'm going to just mimic a backend request here. So we just created an object here and pass that to the variable. And then we pass that variable to the props. So when the next JS build, it will pass these values to these variables. Because as you know, get static props is run at build time. So whenever you build your application, this function will automatically execute and pass values to these pages. Or you can say to this component. Let me save this file and wrap this in a layout. You can see we have here a layout component. Let me just use that for this home page. At the top, I'm going to import the layout. Let me check this path. I'm going to pass here layout, layout component, something like this. And then I'm going to pass this layout to this home page. Now, let me save these changes back to my browser. And here I'm going to say home. I'm going to have my header here, which is coming from the layout. And then we have the new post and the new post data. We also have the footer as well. Now you can notice we get this data from this get static props. If I change this to daily tuition post back to the browser and reload it, I'm going to get here daily tuition post. So by returning these properties to the page, this home component is going to get all these properties at build time. So when the application build, home component will get these properties from get statics prop function. Later, we'll understand how we can get this data from the backend. Just for the basic understanding, I'm using here an object. Now, I hope you understand how you can work with get static props in Next.js application. Now, once we understand the static rendering using get static props, let's understand the server side rendering. If the page use server-side rendering, the page HTML is generated on each request. 
To use server-side rendering for a page, you need to export an async function called get server side props. This function will be called by the server on every request. So let's suppose if I create a new component here and I'm going to name that component page.js. And if I just export here a default function which is page, and if I return the same JSX we have inside this home, let's suppose that if I return the same jsx here using this post and uh, let me pass here a parameter post like this then if i want to use server side rendering then i'm going to export a sync function call get server side props make sure the name is exactly same now we return the get server side props instead of get static props now as you know we use get static props for static generation and we use get server side props for server side rendering now this function will be called by the server on every request now inside this we fetch the data from the server so let's suppose that we have here a constant variable response is equal to and then we fetch this data using fetch function right now i don't have any api so i'm not going to use this fetch function instead i'm just going to use my previous object this one so let's suppose that we get the data something like this inside this variable and now i wanted to return this data so i'm going to just say here return in the object we pass props and then in this prop we pass the response if you want you can change and specify any name to this response variable now in the page we are getting the property called post so instead of response we pass here post something like this now if you want to pass this post to the prop directly then you can do that as well you can just get rid of this object and pass your post here that's completely fine but when you do that you have to get rid of this object and get props as a parameter and using that props you get these variables so you just have to say here props dot title and props dot description something like this now let me save these changes and this time i'm going to say post data from server side rendering i just change the description of this data now let me save this back to my browser and instead of home right now we pass here page when i press enter oops something is missing here i did not added the layout inside this page so let me just grab the layout import statement and pass that right up here save this back to my browser and reload it i'm gonna have my data what i want i'm gonna get the daily tuition post and inside the description you can see the post data from the server side rendering props so whenever you make a request on every request the get server side props will automatically execute the server must compute the result on every request and the result cannot be cached by CDN without any extra configuration. So using get server side props, it will take time to load the data in the browser. So if you have frequently updated data in your application, then you can easily use this get server side props. So I hope you understand the difference between static rendering and server side rendering. Next, we'll talk about fetching client side data. Now, once you understand how we can work with static and server-side rendering, let's take a look at the client-side data fetching. The client-side fetching is useful when your page doesn't require SEO indexing, when you don't need to pre-render your data, or when the content of your page needs to update frequently. Unlike the server-side rendering APIs, you can use client-side data fetching at the component level. So just for the example, if you back to your post, first post component, here I can create a simple client side data fetching. So let me just close all these files. And now inside this layout, let's suppose that if I get rid of this H1 and this image, and then I'm going to get the data from the post variable. So I'm going to say here post dot title. And then I'm going to create a paragraph and say here post dot description. And then I'm going to create this post variable inside this component. So at the top here, I'm simply going to say constant 
in the array we pass post and set post is equal to and then i'm going to pass here use state react hook so at the top we need to import that first so i'm going to say here import use state from react and then i'm going to pass here use state the default value is null just out of that i'm going to create here a constant variable is loading and set loading is equal to use state is going to be false just out of that i'm using use effect hook to execute and fetch the data whenever this component render so just out of this use state i'm going to say here use effect and then i'm going to call here use effect hook so i'm going to say use effect like this return a callback function and then i'm going to say here set loading this set loading variable this is going to be now true and inside this use effect i'm going to get the data from the server as you know i don't have any server right now so instead of getting the data from the server i'm going to copy an object and pass that to this set post so here i'm going to say set post and inside that i'm going to pass an object and just for that i'm going to say here set loading is going to be false now what i want i want to make some delay to send this request to the browser what i'm going to do is at the top here i'm going to create a function and name this function sleep i'm going to pass here a millisecond a parameter and then i'm going to return a new promise and inside this promise i'm going to return a parameter called resolve like this and then i'm going to say set timeout resolve comma millisecond and now i'm going to use this function to make some delay to this request so right here i'm going to say sleep for three seconds so i'm going to pass here three thousand dot then and inside this then inside this then function i'm going to grab and pass these statements like this let me just add here a command make some delay using slip function now just for that let me just save these changes back to my layout and let me just change this head so if i just pass here d something like this then this will just decrease the size of this title back to the first post save this file as well just out of that to this use effect we pass a dependency so we pass here comma and we pass empty dependencies here so we pass here empty square bracket after that before this return statement at the top here i'm going to say if is loading is true then return a paragraph with loading message and if we don't have post then return a paragraph with no data available message something like this let me save this back to my browser and here i need to just specify post forward slash first post and i press enter i'm gonna get here a message no data available and then i'm gonna have my data what's going on here now what i want i want to print the loading message instead of this no data available so instead of specifying this loading set loading true inside this sleep function we pass that outside of this sleep function right up here something like this now let me save the changes and show you the result let me save the changes and you can see i'm going to have here a message loading let me show you that once again when i reload the browser i'm going to get this loading message and when the data is loaded successfully after three seconds i'm going to get that data as a response so we fetch this data using client side rendering this technique is what we call the client side fetching you probably know this technique in react but this technique is not useful when you require seo indexing so if you want to get the data from the api you can use get static props function so i hope you understand how you can fetch the data with different techniques in next year. now we know that how you can use pages in the next application let's take a look at 
what is the use of this app component when we use create next app command to create a next.js application there is an existing file called app.js under the pages folder this is a default app component that you get and it is used by next.js to initialize pages you could imagine it as an entry point of all your pages component which render within this app component this app component receives two parameters which is component and page properties or you can say page props component is basically a current active page component and whenever the route of our app is changed component will be updated to the new page component then we have page props the page props is the initial data that we inject into the page when the page is first loaded this can be done by calling get initial props on the custom app component yes you heard it right you can create your custom app component in the next JS as well you can override this app component with your custom one which can allows you to do amazing things just like persisting layout between page changes keep state when navigating pages custom error handling using component did catch inject additional data into pages and adding a global css to the page creating a custom app component is an advanced part we'll look at that later just for now let's suppose that you want to create a new navbar and display them on all the pages first we create a navbar component in inside this post and then we print that on all the pages so let me just create a new file here inside this post i'm going to create a new file and name that file navbar.js and inside this let me first create a function i can simply say here export function and then i can specify name navbar like this or you can create a function like this as well you can create a variable navbar is equal to but make sure you export that using export default navbar both the statements are identical let's use this one let me get rid of this and now let me create a navbar i'm going to simply create here a return statement and inside this i'm going to create a jsx and create my navbar so let's create here a division tag i'm going to specify a class name to it i'm going to specify container here then i'm going to create ul tag an order list and inside this an order list i have my list inside this list i have my anchor tag if you want you can put this anchor tag in the link tag as well i'm going to leave this as it is just for this example i'm going to leave this anchor tag as it is then i'm going to say home let me duplicate this li tag three more times and then i'm going to change this to about this became blocks and this became contact now just for that let me style this navbar right inside this style folder let me create a new file and i'm going to name that file navbar.module.css i'm going to import this file in the navbar at the top so i'm going to say import styles from then specify double dot forward slash again and then i'm going to specify the styles folder and then i'm going to specify the navbar module file just for that inside this navbar module here i'm going to create classes so i'm going to first create here container to this container we pass 100 percent width then margin is going to be zero background is going to be rgba color i'm going to pass here rgba color so and alpha is going to be 0 0.9 just for that i'm going to specify color to it color is going to be white spawn just for that inside the container as you know we have ul tag so we pass here ul and inside that we have li tag so we pass here li we specify float left then we select the container again then we select the container again select the ui li and create hover effect on it when we hover on the li we specify color black that's it this is a very simple styling for this navbar save this file back to the navbar and as you know to access this container you need to use this style here so instead of this container i'm just going to say styles dot container like this let me save this file back to my project and here i'm going to say post at navbar when i press enter here i'm going to get an error message this is because the import file 
and resolve the style navbar module you have to specify here dot css now when i open my navbar i'm gonna have the result something like this i need to specify height as well to the navbar so just out of this width i'm gonna specify height 30 pixel let me change the font size to this navbar and remove this disk so i'm gonna copy this statement paste that up here and i'm gonna specify here disk list style none so this will remove this disk from this ul tag now just for that let me add some space between these so i'm going to just specify here display flex and gap is going to be one em here you can notice i'm going to have some gap between these navigation items just out of that let me just specify here font size which is going to be 14 pixel let me just change this height and i'm going to specify here 24 pixel and here i'm going to have nav bar you can see now what i want instead of black color so instead of this black i'm going to choose this yellow color this one when i hover it you can see i'm going to have this yellow color to this navigation items now once you finish your nav bar what i want to do is i want to display this nav bar on every page so i'm going to just back to the app component and at the top here i'm going to say import navbar from the post something like this and then i'm going to copy this navbar and to this render statement right here i'm going to pass empty bracket like this print my navbar here and after that i'm going to print this component so i'm going to grab this component and paste that here and now if i back to my home page you can see i'm going to have my navbar here and if i back to my first post by clicking on this go to first post you can see here i'm going to have this navbar in the first post component as well so we are going to have this navbar on every page of the application so this navbar component will now show in every page of the application how cool and simple it is so you can use this app component in many different ways now let me just show you what do we have inside this page props if i copy this and if i say here console.log page props let me save this open my console and reload the browser you can see here right now inside this page props i'm not gonna get anything this is because this page is not depends on any external data i'm not using here get static props to create this page what if i open the component this home page inside this home page you can see right down here i have a function called get static props and we get this data from the api or you can say from the external source and then specify that to the page now because this page it depends on the external source if i open here components home when i press enter and inside this console i'm going to have my get static props data you can see here we are passing this data to the component from the external sources if i open here page component then you can see inside this console i'm going to get this data we have the title and the description data this is because we pass this data to the get static props function so you can see inside this app component inside this page props you get all the properties of your page or you can say you get the data of your page and inside this component you have the current component so if i print this component right here reload the browser then you can see right inside this console i'm going to get the current component which is the page component if i change this to home inside the component variable i'm going to have my home component you can notice so this is how you can use this component in the next js application as you all know you might have a page in your application that depends on the external data we use get static props to fetch the required data to render this page in this lesson we'll talk about the case where each page path depends on the external data nextjs allows you to statically generate pages with paths that depends on the external data this enables dynamic urls in nextjs nextjs enables you to define dynamic routes in your app using bracket and inside that bracket you have the parameter instead of setting a static name to your page you can use the dynamic one dynamic routing refers to generating routes or you can say the urls 
to serve individual pages based on the data which is subject to change. Let me show you a very simple example. So let's first create a file which use for dynamic routing. So to create a file, we click on the new file icon and then we specify the file name. So we pass here a file name in the bracket like this. And then we pass here ID. And the name of the file is .js, means .javascript. You can see how I created this dynamic route file. The file is in this bracket. This is a parameter ID. We will look at how we can use and access this ID later. Just for now, let's create this file. So once you have this file, let's suppose that you have a constant variable, something like this. You have the post data variable and inside that you have two objects with different IDs. What you want when the user open the URL with the ID 1, you want to display the component with this ID 1 data. For example, this data is going to create two URLs, something like this. It's going to create post 1 because we have ID 1 inside this post data and it's also going to create post 2 because we have ID 2 inside this data. So the pages or you can say the URL of the pages is depends on the external data. So if you open this first URL, it's going to open a component with the data of ID 1. If you open the post 2, this URL, it will open the component with the ID 2 data. Now, let me show you with the example. Let me get rid of this command. And here, we are working on this data. So, I'm going to leave this as it is. And right down here, I'm going to create my component. So, we need to create here, export default statement, function. We pass here, name to this function, which is post. And then, we're going to return an article. The article, HTML element. Inside this article, I'm going to print this data. So we pass here curly braces and here we pass post variable. I'm going to get this data from the parameter. So I'm going to pass here object and pass here post. And right here, I'm going to say post dot map. I'm going to iterate over this object, this array of object using this map JavaScript function. And then we pass here callback function like this. Keep in mind, you don't have to specify here curly braces because if you specify curly braces, then you have to specify return statement manually. Instead of doing this, I'm going to pass here parenthesis. So now inside this parenthesis, I don't have to specify the return statement. Here, I'm going to create a div h1 with the p.id. Then I'm going to create two more h1 heading level tags. And then I'm going to say p.title this property. And then I'm going to say p dot description like this. And to this div, we pass key to uniquely identify this division tag. So I'm going to say here p dot id, this id variable. So now once we iterate over this object using this statement, let me just pass this data using get static props. As you know, you pass this data using get static props function so just down here i'm going to say here export a sync function with the name get static props now as you know this function is going to execute every time when you build your nextjs application and inside this we need to return this data this one this post data so inside this function i'm going to say constant post is equal to post data and then i'm going to return here prompts in the object we return post so i'm going to return this post variable with this get static props we already learned this how we can pass data to this component using get static props let me save the changes and now let me show you how i can open this page in the browser you can notice the name of the page is id and this id is surrounded by square bracket if you open your browser and open the post and the file name which is id then you're not going to get anything here you're going to get an error message here get static path is required for dynamic shg page shg means static site generation page so if you are using static site generation page with dynamic routes you have to use a function called get static path so just back to your page so you have to create here a function 
So I'm going to say here, export async function and the function name is get static paths. Keep in mind, the name is get static path. The previous function is get static props and this function is get static path. This function is used for dynamic routing. So if you want to access the dynamic page, you have to specify this function. But now instead of this ID, we pass here data. So let's suppose that you want to print this first ID, this first post. You pass this ID 1 in this URL right here. You pass here 1, something like this. This is going to return the component with this first ID data. To do that, you have to use here get static path. Now inside this function, you need to specify all your data first. You need to specify all your data. Instead of using this data inside this file, what if we create a new function for that? So that will just mimic a API call. So what if I create here a new folder called library and inside that if I create a new file helper.js then in this file I can just simply export a function get all post and then I'm going to copy this post data or you can just cut this data from this id page and paste that right here and i'm going to just return this i'm going to return post data so if you want to use your data you have to just call this get all post so in the id at the top we're simply going to say import in the object we pass get all post from double dot forward slash then specify the lab folder and then we specify the helper file so now i can just simply pass here get all post to this variable to get this data now i'm going to do the same inside this get static path so here so here i'm going to say constant post is equal to get all post so this will just return all the data and i'm going to say here constant paths is equal to post dot map i'm going to iterate over this data and create different pages i'm going to iterate over this data and pass value to this id parameter you can see when we create this dynamic page we pass id here so whenever we call this id or you can say whenever we call the url we need to pass value to this id parameter it may be one or two depending on your data so i'm going to just iterate over this path so i'm going to say here post i'm going to get all the data iterate over this data using map and inside this i'm going to say post and then inside this object i'm going to pass params using params you specify value to this id parameter so we pass here params pass here colon and pass an object and inside this object you specify your file name or you can say the parameter name the parameter name is id here so we pass here id if you have a different name to your dynamic route variable or you can say to your dynamic route parameter then you can specify that variable or you can say parameter name right here and then you pass value to it the value is the ids as you know we have two ids here so i'm going to iterate over this object and pass this id here so we pass here post dot id and as you know when you specify value in the browser url that is a type of string so you have to convert this id into string so we pass here to string something like this now just out of that you have to return this using return statement so you have to say here return in the object you pass this path to this get static path and then you return the fallback value false now we'll talk about what is the meaning of this fallback value after a few seconds. Just for now, just save all the changes back to the browser and reload it. You can see, you're going to have all your data as a response. What I want, when I specify one in the URL, I only want to get the first ID data. When I specify here two in the URL, I want to get the data of the second ID. To do that, I'm just going to back to this get static props and we need to just filter 
this get all post so what we have to do is when the user open the url with the id one or two we need to get that id first so the get static props allows us to get that id using a parameter called params so you can just simply pass here an object and pass here params with this params variable you can get the current dynamic id of your page so you can get that id inside this params so you have to just specify here params and you get that id or you can say this parameter value using this structuring so i'm going to say here constant in the object we pass id like this so we get that id from the parameter and pass that to this variable and i'm going to pass this variable to this get all post something like this and inside this helper file we pass here that id parameter like this and here i'm going to say if we have id then i'm going to filter this data and return to the component so i'm going to just say here return post data dot filter i'm going to use here a javascript function filter and then I'm going to say here post as a parameter. And then I'm going to say post ID. This ID if it is equal to this ID. Then return that current object. Now let me explain this. If we have value inside this parameter. Then I'm going to execute this if statement. Otherwise return this all data. So if we have value. Let's suppose that we have one inside this variable. Then this post data is going to return only this first object using this filter function let me save this back to the id.js and save this file as well now let me back to my project and reload it you can see i'm just going to get the second post if i specify here one then i'm going to get my first post now let's suppose that i create one more id here let's suppose if i copy this statement specify that here and this is the id3 this is the third post and the post data for third post back to the browser and if i specify here three i'm going to get the third dynamic url with this third id data so i hope you understand how you can work with dynamic routes in nextjs now in the previous lecture we understand about dynamic routes we use this get static path to create dynamic routes in nextjs in this lesson let's talk about custom 404 page but before that let me explain this return statement as i said we pass two values to this return statement first is the path which is this path variable and as a second parameter we pass here fallback value false what does this mean if fallback value is false then any path not returned by get static path will result in 404 page in development get static path runs on every request in production get static path runs at build time so if you have false value here inside this fallback if the path is not match then you will get 404 page as a response the path returned from this function will be rendered to html at build time the path that have not been generated at build time will not result in 404 page. Instead, Next.js will serve the fallback version of the page on the first request to each path. In the background, Next.js will statically generate the requested path. Subsequently, request to the same path will serve the generated page, just like other pages pre-render at build time. The 404 page may be accessed very often. Server rendering an error page for every visit, increasing the load of Next.js server. This can result in increasing cost and slow experience. To avoid this pitfall, Next.js provides a static 404 page by default without having to add any additional files. Let me show you that. If I open a path post1, then this is going to return the first post as a response. Now, if I specify here post2, then I'm going to have my second post. If I specify post 3, then I'm going to have my third post. But in my data, let's suppose I don't have the fourth post. If I specify here 4, you can see I'm going to get a default page, which is 404. And you'll get an error message. This page could not be found. This is the default page of Next.js. 
you can create your custom page as well so to create this page you have to back to the pages and inside this you have to create a new file with the name 404.js and then you specify your export statement here export default function is going to be custom 404 that's upon you you can specify any name to this function and then i'm going to return here h1 heading tag with 404 error message page not found back to my browser and reload it now you can see i'm going to have my custom page as a response so when we have a wrong path inside this browser url we're going to get the custom url so you can create your custom url 404 file using this 404.js and then if you want to remove this custom file from the project you can just delete this 404 file from these pages nextjs will automatically display 404 error code when the url is not matched now i hope you understand how you can work with 404 custom error file in nextjs Now let's talk about API routes. We can use API endpoints to build either a RESTful API or a GraphQL API. With Nextjs API routes, there is no longer a need to set up a backend Node.js server to build an API. Building out two separate projects for a front-end and backend introduces its own set of challenges. Nextjs simplifies this process by becoming a full-stack web framework with addition of API routes. API routes go in the pages inside this api folder creating pages inside this api folder will generate api endpoints just for the example let's suppose that you have user file inside this api so for example if i create here a file called users.js then this is going to represent the api endpoint users so if you want to access your users you have to head on to the localhost 3000 api and the name of your file which is users when you head on to this location you will get your data so right now you're not going to get anything because inside this file i don't have anything here now you can notice with nextjs you will get a default file called hello.js let me open that here you can notice you have here one endpoint which is hello.js and this is going to export a default function called handler and inside this handler we have two parameters request and response as you know when we make a request we need to add two parameters request and response and as a response we are going to return a status code 200 which is the successful status and then we return a json data with it let me show you how you can call this request if i open my project then i can head on to localhost 3000 api forward slash hello when i press enter you can see i'm going to get a response from the api endpoint hello this file of this api directory represent the endpoint hello and from this endpoint we are returning this data we are doing the same thing with this users file inside this users file let me create here a function i'm going to just export a default function and name this function get users and we pass here request and response parameter don't forget to pass request and response parameter otherwise this function will not work and then i'm going to say here response dot status status is going to be 200 which is successful status and then i'm going to return a json data inside the json i'm going to return an array of object so we pass here an array and inside this array i'm going to pass here two objects something like this so now we have an array of object inside this json so when we call this user endpoint i'm going to get this response so let me save these changes back to my project and instead of hello I'm going to say here users when i press enter you can see i'm going to get my response in the browser now let me show you how you can fetch this data in the component so let's suppose that you have here file called user.js and inside this you export a default function called users now this is the type of component right and inside this we return a simple jsx so we pass here article and inside this i'm going to iterate over the users and print all the users one by one inside this article now to get the users we need to pass here a parameter so here we pass object and pass here users and then inside this article 
we're simply going to pass here curly braces and then say here users dot map i'm going to iterate over this array of object using a map function and then i'm going to say here u for users and inside this parenthesis i'm going to say div and then specify h1 heading tag u dot name now because we have name inside this data we pass here name now just out of that as you know this is the static generation and you have to pass data to the static generation using get static props so just down here you pass this data to this component using a function so we pass here export async make sure the function is async function so we pass here async function get static props and then inside this i'm going to make a request to the api so we say here constant response is equal to and then i'm going to call here fetch javascript function now this function is used to make a request to the api now the first parameter is going to be the url the endpoint of the data as you know if you open the browser this is your endpoint of this data let me copy this and then we pass that endpoint here like this just out of that we need to convert this data into json format so we pass here constant users is equal to response dot json and now because this is the async function we can pass here await so everything works asynchronously something like this and just out of that once we get this data we can just return it we can return that data using return statement so we return props to this props we pass users now make sure you pass this same variable to this props because we're destructuring this user inside this component something like this so this is how you can get the data from the api so we just created a simple api endpoint using this api route and then use that inside this users component back to my project and now let me open this here i'm going to type post and then specify the component name which is user now when i press enter you can see i'm going to have my data as a response so i'm going to get here two values as a response from this page using this technique you can create different endpoints inside this api folder and fetch that data and specify that to the page later in this course we will talk more about this api routes and understand how we can use api routes in the next year's project now in this lecture we'll talk a little bit more about dynamic routes defining routes by using predefined paths is not always enough for complex application as you know in next year's you can add brackets to create a dynamic route you can notice here in the post we created this bracket and inside that we pass the slug or you can say the parameter id we consider this page as dynamic route now let me show you how you can access the value of this parameter or you can say the value of this id so in next is you can access the value of this parameter using use router function or you can say using use router hook so at the top you first import a module from next router and from this module you call use router and we are using this use router hook to access the parameter value so just down here i'm going to say constant router is equal to use router and just out of that we create a variable and this structure the parameter value inside an object so we pass here id this value is equal to router dot query using this query property you get this value and now let me just console dot lock this value so you can see this value in the browser let me save the changes open the post one when i press enter you can see i'm going to have my first post here and if i open the console inside my console i have one as a result if i change this query value to two i'm going to get two as a response so you can easily access your query parameter value using this router the match path parameter will be sent as a query parameter and it will be merged with the other query parameters for example let's suppose that you have a route path called post a b c so this route is going to return the result something like this going to get the id and the value of that id similarly if 
let's suppose that you have post a b c the end point and then to that end point you have a variable who is equal to bar and this route is going to return a result something like this you're going to get an object with id a b c and the variable you will get the value as well with this variable multiple dynamic route segments work the same way for example let's suppose that you have a page with the name post in the square bracket you have id and after that you create a file inside this bracket command dot js now this is going to match the route call post a b c then you have your command and if you use this route to access this value this parameter value then you will get the result something like this you will get the id abc and then the comment so you can create multiple dynamic routes in the next js as well now if you want you can create extended dynamic routes as well dynamic routes can be extended to catch all the paths by adding three dots inside the square bracket let's suppose that you have a file inside pages so we have here a folder pages inside that we have a folder post and inside that we have a file slug.js now that's upon you you can specify any name to this parameter now you specify here three dots before the name of this parameter value using this technique you can match this route with different endpoints for example you can match this route with post a or you can match this route with post b and also you can match this route with post a and b and so on you can use any name for this variable just like id or command that's upon you matches parameter will be sent as a query parameter to the page and it will always be an array so the path post a will have the following query so if you use router to access this value then you will have the result something like this you will have the slug and inside an array you're going to get these values so if you execute this endpoint you will get the result something like this you execute this endpoint post a and b then you will get the result something like this in the array you will get the value of both parameter you can catch all the routes parameter using the router function now you are not limited to only use this router to access the value of the parameter you can also use it for client side navigation without using a link tag let's suppose that you have here a button and using this button you have to navigate the user to the different post so you specify here post a title and then to this button you specify on click event and to this on click event we pass a callback function so when the user click on it we are going to execute this callback function and then we're going to call here router dot push now this function is going to push this page to the different route so we push this page at post user now here inside this push you specify your url endpoint back to my browser when i click on the post you can see i'm, I'm going to have my user page so this is the basic understanding of user route hook of nextjs now let's take a look at a little bit more about a link component previously we understand how we can work with link component in nextjs application now let's take a look at how we can navigate with the link component in nextjs here in the layout component right here we have two headers let's make this first header for this home page i'm gonna make the header for the home page using the area of navigation links let me show you how you can use that inside this lab right here i'm gonna create a new file and i'm gonna name that file now links.js that's upon you you can specify any name to this file just after that inside this i'm gonna put the area of object so i'm gonna put here an array and inside that we have different objects to this object we pass a name the name of the navigation menu and its path you can see we have different paths to this navigation items and then i'm going to export this nav link so i'm going to say here export save these changes back to the layout and at the top right up here i'm going to import nav links from the library and from the nav links.js file just out of that instead of this division tag i'm going to iterate over this nav links and print my home header so instead of adding all the code right inside this 
I'm going to create a new function for that. Here I'm going to say function home nav. And then inside this home nav, I'm going to say return. And inside this, I'm going to create a nav. And inside this nav, right here, I'm going to create an curly braces. Inside this curly braces, I'm going to call this nav links dot map. I'm going to iterate over the area of object using map function. And after that, I'm going to call here link and index. Or you can call here just i for index. Just out of that, inside this map, I'm going to iterate over an array of object. So I'm going to say here return ul. To this ul, we first specify key. So using this key, you will not get any warning from the React component. So I'm going to say here link dot name. I'm going to specify name property to this key. Just out of that, here I'm going to add link component, something like this. We don't have here link component. So let me just add that first. Import link from next link. Just out of that, right down here, I can use this link component inside this URL. And just out of that, right inside this link, I'm going to add li tag. And inside this li, we pass link dot name the name of the navigation item and to this link we pass href attribute and then we pass here link dot path so we pass both these properties to this link inside this link we pass li tag and to this li we pass this link dot name this value and i'm going to pass a path value to this href attribute so we can navigate to different items just for that, let me save these changes back to the header. Let me copy this home now. And instead of this div, we pass here home now. Something like this. Back to my component. And as you can see, I'm going to have my navigation links. Now, if you want, you can specify CSS property to this JSX. Now, let me inspect this. If you inspect this, you can notice you have your navigation items. Now, what if I click on this about us? When I click on it, it's going to open the about page. If I click on the services, it's going to open the services page. And if I click on this blog, it's going to open the blog page. And if I click on the home, that will open the home page. So this is the way you can specify different path to your navigation items using an array. Now, if I change these services to post forward slash user, let me save this back to my project. And if I click on the services, you can see it's going to navigate us to the post user on the post user we have two users so using this technique you can pass different values to your navigation items just for that what if you don't want to use this href attribute to this link component in that case you can use the path name as well for example instead of this link path you can simply pass here an object and inside this object you pass path name then you pass colon to it and then pass value so the value is going to be link dot path. Let me save this back to my project, reload it. And now when I click on the services, it's going to do the same thing. Just out of that, what if you want to access your dynamic routes? Inside your post, you have your post ID. With this ID, you can access all your posts. To access that, you can simply back to your nav link. And let's suppose to this about us, you specify post because you have this dynamic route inside this post. And then you pass here forward slash in the square bracket, you pass the slug, which is ID, something like this. And then just out of that, you back to the layout. And after this path name, and you pass value to that path using query property. So you pass here query, and in the object, you pass ID 1. You pass value to this path using query property. Let me save this. Back to my project and now when I click on this about us, you can see I'm going to get my first post. If I want to get my second post, I'm going to pass here ID2. Let me save this and click on the about us. I'm going to get my second post. You can get these values from the array as well or from the component itself. You can get these values from the backend database and specify inside this array. So you can simply navigate through different pages. Practice with this code to understand how navigation works.
we learn how we can fetch the data and display the loading message when the data is loading and we display data is not available message if the data is not available an improved way to fetch data and cache it upon future visit is to use a library called swr which is also made by a developer of nextjs swr in this context stands for stale while revalidate it gives us a convenient hook use swr to more easily fetch data and handle loading and error state as well as cache data for future visit if nothing has changed if it has changed fetch data in the background while the stale data is shown from the cache if the page must be pre-rendered nextjs support two form of pre-rendering static generation and server side rendering we already learned that in the previous lectures together with swr we can pre-render the page for seo and also have a feature such as caching revalidation focus tracking refetching on interval on the client side let's take a look at a very simple example to understand how we can use swr in the nextjs application i'm going to open my post folder and right here i have here a page called user i'm going to open that so to work with this library you need to first install it so i'm going to open my terminal and here i'm going to say npm i for install swr this will install this library in the react application once you've done that just clear the screen close this terminal and at the top right up here you need to first import that library so here i'm going to say import use swr from a library called swr use swr is a hook of this library just for that we need a feature function to fetch the data and convert that data into a json response so at the top here i'm going to create a constant feature function is equal to i'm going to pass here spread operator arguments and then i'm going to say here fetch i'm going to use here a javascript function fetch and then pass this arguments here like this and if the response is successful then i'm going to execute the then function response dot json so i'm going to return a response in json format when we pass argument to this fetch just out of that right inside this user right here i'm going to say use swr i'm going to call this hook use swr and then pass the endpoint as you can see when you scroll down this is your user endpoint you have this user endpoint inside this api you can access your user data from this user endpoint i'm going to access that so at the top to this use swr i'm going to pass this path something like this and then i'm going to pass my feature function as a second argument this feature function is going to convert this response in json format and return as a response just for that this use swr is going to return few options we can access these options inside an object using javascript destructuring so we pass here constant in the object i'm going to pass data and error is equal to oops constant data and error is equal to and then this is going to return value to this data and error property there are different options you will get with this use swr we'll look at that later just for now let me show you, how you can access this inside this just out of this statement right down here i'm going to say if we have error inside this data then i'm going to return a division tag with a message error fetching data and if we don't have data then we return division tag with loading message something like this and now let me save these changes back to my project reload it and now let me open the post user you can see i'm going to have my data when you reload the browser you can see you have here a loading message now because we don't have any delay from the api you're not going to see that loading message but if you add any delay to this response you will see this loading message now you can see here i'm making the client side request using swr you are not limited to only make the client side request you can use this get static props to make a request using swr 
you can easily use static generation and server-side rendering using SWR with few lines of SWR configuration. Don't worry, in the future lectures, we'll learn more about SWR in detail. Now, once you understand how you can use SWR in the Next.js application, let me show you how you can store the data in the MongoDB database. If you open the API users.js, we just store this data inside this user API endpoint. Or you can store this data in the JSON file or in the JavaScript file. But usually, we're not going to store this data in the JSON or JavaScript file. Instead, we store this data in the database. So we can access this data and create an API endpoint to fetch this data from the database and display on the front end. Let me show you how you can connect MongoDB database and insert both these users inside the MongoDB database. So you have to first type MongoDB and enter. Then just go ahead and click on this mongodb.com. Right from here, you have to first sign in. I'm going to click on the sign in button and I'm going to sign in with my Google account. So I'm going to click on this login with Google. Once I done that, it's going to open the database. So we need to first create a new project. I already done that. You have to just click on this new project and create a new project once you create that you have to create a cluster or you can say you have to create your database to create a database just click on this build a database here you have three options the server layers dedicated and the share server let's choose the free one which is share server i'm going to click on this create button once i click on it just scroll down i'm going to leave everything as it is and then i'm going to change this cluster name and i'm going to name this testing you can choose any name to this cluster that's upon you and then click on this create cluster once i done that i'm going to create a new user so i'm going to pass here username admin and password is going to be admin123 now because i already have user inside this database access i'm not going to create this user now if you don't want to create this user early you can just leave this statement as it is scroll down and click on the finish and close just after that just click on this go to database and now it will take a few minutes to create this cluster we're going to click on this database access then you can see here i have here a new user to create a new user just click on this add new database user and create a new user when you click on it you will get your username and password so i'm going to create my new user using username and password and then i'm going to click on this network access and i'm going to create add ip address so i'm going to click on this add ip address and then I'm going to choose add current IP address here and click on confirm. I already done that. If you want to know more about MongoDB, I have a dedicated video on it. You can check out that video from the link provided in the description. You can see the database is now successfully created. Let me just click on this connect. And here we get the application connection. So I'm going to click on this connect your application. And here is the URL. You have to copy this URL and paste that in your Next.js application. So just back to your Next.js application, right inside your Next.js app database. And inside this, let me create a new file called connection.js. Here, what we have to do is we have to create the MongoDB connection. Now to create this connection, we need to install a library called Mongos. So I'm going to open my terminal and now I'm going to enter into my application. Let me zoom this a little bit and here i'm going to execute a command called npm i for install and then i'm going to install mongos mongos is a library used to connect mongodb with your next.js application now once you have this here you're going to create a constant main function something like this i'm going to just specify that async function i'm going to initialize this function as async function and inside this i'm going to connect my mongodb with next.js so at the top here i'm going to first say import mongoose from mongoose library so i'm going to say here mongoose dot connect using this connect function you're going to connect your mongodb with next.js so here we have a single quote i'm going to paste my link here now you're not limited to specify this link just inside this connect function if you want you can create the dot env file inside the next.js and specify this link inside that file we look at that how we can work with .env files in the Next.js later. Just for now, just specify this link and right here, I'm going to get rid of this password and my password of this user is admin123. So I'm going to pass my password here. 
like this this is my user this is my password and i'm going to leave everything as it is just pass here a bit to make this asynchronous and after that just out of this statement here i'm going to say console.log and i'm going to print database connected something like this just out of that you have to just export this main so we can use that in the other files so i'm going to say here export default main that's it your connection is now successfully ready now just out of that we need to tell this mongodb database that what kind of data i want to store in the database for that we are using schema so inside this database let's create a new file and i'm going to name this file schema.js that's upon you you can specify any name to this file inside this file we need to first import mongoose from the mongoose module and then here i'm going to say constant kitty schema is equal to this is the variable name and then i'm going to create a new instance of mongodb schema so i'm going to pass here new mongoose dot schema something like this you pass here parentheses and an object using this object you specify the structure for your document so here inside this document i just have here a name with type of string that's it this is a simple schema just for that i'm going to say constant kitten is equal to mongoose dot model now we have to create a model and specify name to it i'm going to specify name to it kitten and specify the schema here this schema is going to specify structure to this model. So we pass this variable as a second argument to this model. Just out of that, I'm going to just export this. So I'm going to say here export default kitten. Let me save this. That's it. Just out of that, you have to back to your API endpoints. So I'm using here user endpoint. I'm going to open that. Just after that, inside this user endpoint at the top, I'm going to first import my database connection function. So I'm going to say here import main from the database connection and then I'm going to say import kitten from the database schema. We also need schema to specify structure to the document. So we import both these files and inside this function here we first going to check. So I'm going to call here mem if the connection is successful then we're going to execute this function or we're going to catch an error inside this catch function. So I'm going to say here error console dot error and then i'm going to print this error here something like this so now this function is going to return a promise we are going to catch that promise error inside this catch function and if you want to print a successful message you can use then function right down here i'm going to say constant create is equal to new and then you pass this schema let me just specify here capital k like this so we pass here key 10 something like this so we create a new instance of this schema and then pass here data so as you know inside the schema we have the name with the type of string so we pass that here so i'm going to just copy this name and then specify that right here something like this just out of that right down here we need to save this data so i'm going to say here create dot save this function is going to save this data in the mongodb database and then i'm going to say here dot then then i'm going to get the response and i'm going to print here response dot status 200 the successful status and return the json data create this one i'm going to return this data when we successfully save this data in the mongodb database now let me just comment this because we are not using this now let me save these changes back to the project and let me open here api endpoint and we have user here users you can see the name of the endpoint is users so we pass here users and press enter when i open the api users i'm going to get an error message cannot override keaton model once compiled you're going to get this error because we have here this statement nextjs is going to recompile this statement every time when the page is loaded so to solve this problem if we already have this model then we don't need to create this model again we need to tell nextjs that we don't need to create this model if the model is already available to do that here you have to specify mongoose dot model and here inside this you're just going to specify kitten 
something like this and if we don't have this model we execute the second statement so we pass here or so if we don't have this model just execute the second statement otherwise execute this first statement you can also simplify this statement with mongos dot model is equal to and then you pass here an object you can use this technique as well but i will suggest to use this technique for the reference i'm going to comment this back to the project and reload it oops i think something went wrong in the terminal yeah i get the error message let me just check the connection string again yeah i just misspelled this admin it's admin 123 let me save this restart my server you can see i'm gonna get the result something like this you might get error here if you get an error message just move this database folder inside these pages something like this and that will solve all the problems so once you have your database inside these pages now let me just insert my second value in the users you can see right down here we have the second value let me copy this and paste that here i don't have id in my schema let me save these changes back to my project and reload it you can see now i'm going to have my second name and if i back to my database click on browse collection then you can notice here we have test database and inside that we have a document called kitten and then we have few documents here if you load this browser that will insert a different data into your document now if you make a request on the api endpoint user you will get the response back and this will store the data in the database as you know this is not the post request but still you're going to insert the data in the database what i want on the different request we need to perform different actions for example for get request we get the data from the database for the post request we are going to insert this data in the database so let me show you how i can do that now let me show you how you can validate the request so how we can find which request is it to do that let me just get rid of this statement i'm going to leave this main function as it is because inside this main function we have the connection so if we have the successful connection i'm going to execute this statement and just out of that, I'm going to get the user HTTP request. To get that, we need this request parameter. So here, at the bottom, I'm going to say constant. In the object, I'm going to say method is equal to, we pass here, request. So I'm going to just destructure a property called method from this request. And right down here, we can say switch method. And inside this, we can display different cases. So if it is get request, I'm going to say response.status 200.json and inside this json i'm simply going to print an object with endpoint users just saw that at second case so i'm going to pass here a case if it is post request if it is post request then i'm going to return a response so i'm going to say here response status 200 and this is going to be the post request something like this and make sure to pass your break statement like this to break the statement when the condition is met after that we need to specify the default statement as well so we specify here default in the default statement i'm going to set the header so i'm going to say here response dot set header allow and then we pass here in the array get and post so we allow only get and post request and we're going to send a response so response dot status 405 which is the error code and then i'm going to say here end and here i'm going to specify backtick operator and say method and then we print here method the user method not allowed like this and we break this statement as well that's it I'm going to just save the changes and to test this post request i'm going to open the postman testing tool using the postman testing tool i'm going to make a request to the user endpoint and get the response so if i specify here localhost 3000 api users when i make a get request when i click on the send you can see when i click on the send button i'm going to get here a response called method get and the endpoint is going to be user i'm going to get same response on the browser as well but as you know using browser you can't make post request you need a form to make a post request but let's make a post request using postman here i'm going to choose post 
and click on the send button you can see i'm going to get a response method is going to be post and the endpoint is going to be user what if i make a put or delete request when i make a delete request you can see i'm going to get an error message this is method delete not allowed so this is going to return this default statement so this is how we can simply create http request in the next.js application and now using this get we can get the data from the mongodb database and using this post we create a new data inside mongodb database don't worry when we build a project i will explain everything step by step previously we understand the basics of swr we use swr library to fetch the data from the backend swr is derived from stale while revalidate swr is a strategy to first return a data from cache this is what we call stale then we send the fetch request this is what we call revalidate and finally come with the up-to-date data with swr component will get stream of data updates consistently and automatically previously in swr lecture we understand how we can use it we created this simple example of user and we use this swr to fetch the data now what i want i want to use swr with static side rendering and with server side rendering there are few useful feature of swr we can use swr for fast lightweight and reusable data fetching built-in cache and request duplication real-time experience transport and protocol agnostic and it also support typescript now let me show you a simple syntax of swr i'm going to scroll down right here i'm going to type the syntax of swr so when you call swr hook from the swr library you will get three parameters first key second feature and third is options now the key is a unique string for the request it may be a function an array or a null value or you can specify here your api endpoint then we have here a feature function this function is optional this function is going to return a promise by fetching the data from this key endpoint just like that we have here optional parameter which is options and here you specify the object of options for this swr hook just out of that this hook is going to return few properties we are going to destructure these properties inside an object so we'll get data error is validating and muted from this use swr hook inside this data you will get the data from this feature function inside this error if anything goes wrong you will get the error message using this error variable if there is a request or revalidation loading this is going to return true or false value and then we have muted muted is a function to mutate the cache data when building a web application you might need to reuse the data in many places of the ui it is incredibly easy to create reusable data hooks on top of swr let me show you how you can create your own data hook using swr we use the built-in use swr hook to fetch this data now let's create own hook and fetch this data from the server so right down here i'm going to create a new function i'm going to say here function i'm going to name this function get data and inside this function i'm going to say constant in the object we pass data and error is equal to use swr and inside this we're simply going to pass this endpoint something like this and just after that we pass the feature function as a second argument just after that right down here i'm going to just return an object and inside this object i can say user data then i'm going to say is loading if we have error and if we don't have data then i'm going to return true and false value to this is loading just after that i'm going to say is error and then we pass this error here something like this now let me use this custom hook so i'm going to copy this scroll up and instead of use swr here i'm going to pass get data and then from this as you know we can get user is loading and is error so let me just use these properties here user is loading and is error so we pass this values here so we destructure these values using this object and now we can use these values right down here so i'm going to say if there is an error i'm going to say is error just print that error if there is a loading then i'm going to say here 
is loading and then i'm going to copy this and paste that right here if it is loading i'm going to print the loading message and then i'm going to specify this user right here now let me get it of this exclamation mark let me save the changes to the browser and now let's head on to post users i'm going to get my data i'm going to get this data from this user endpoint i just updated this user endpoint something like this and if i create another object here like this with data id 2 and the name is going to be john snow let me save this you can see swr will automatically fetch this data and i'm going to get my response back so this is super easy right you don't have to reload your browser every time when you fetch the data swr will do everything for you we use this feature function to fetch the data from the backend server using the API endpoint. Let's talk a little bit about this feature function and see how we can customize it. We can customize this feature function to return more information. If the status code is not 200, we can consider it as error, even if it can be passed as JSON. Now, let's see how we can customize this feature function. What we can do is, I'm going to get rid of this statement and here I'm going to simply return a sync function with URL parameter, something like this. And we can pass this URL parameter to the fetch function of JavaScript. I can simply see here constant response is equal to await fetch. Fetch is the JavaScript function. And then we pass the URL here. And that URL is going to pass to this fetch function to fetch the data. Now, let's suppose that the status code is not in the range of 200 or 300. We still try to pass and throw an error. For example, here I can say if response dot okay if the status code is not okay so i'm going to pass here exclamation mark so if the status code is not okay then execute this if block and here i'm going to say constant error is equal to new error and here i'm going to pass an error occurred while fetching the data and then right down here i can attach the extra information to this error object i can simply say here error dot info is equal to await and then i'm going to say response dot json and then i'm going to say here error dot status is equal to response dot status or you can specify your own status code here just out of that you can just simply throw this error object so you can see we simply create our own error and throw them if the status code is not okay and if it is okay we then simply going to return a response dot json something like this in this object you can see i'm just going to create an error object the new instance of this error and then we pass some information to it and then i'm going to return this information to this feature function if there is an error or you can say if the status code is not okay now once you know that how you can customize the feature function SWR uses the exponential backup algorithm to retry the request on error. The algorithm allows the app to recover from errors quickly, but not waste resources retrying too often. In my SWR, here you can see when I scroll down, I use here use SWR and we pass the second argument which is feature. Just out of this feature, I can pass different options to this use SWR hook. I can simply pass here a comma and then pass here an object. Inside this object, I can pass a different options. So I can say here on error, you can see we have different options here. So let's use this on error retry. And then I'm going to specify here colon. And this is a type of function. So we need to pass here arrow function like this. And inside this function, you are going to get different properties. So inside this, we are going to get error. Then we can get key, then we can get config, revalidate, and in the object, you get retry count. Now, let me explain how we can use these properties inside this on error function. Inside this, I can simply say if error dot status code, if it is equal to 404, then just return. 
This means if the status code is equal to 404, then I don't want to retry this API request. I just wanted to return only one request when the status code is equal to 404. Then I can say if the key, this parameter, the key, if it is equal to API user, then I'm going to exit from this function. So I'm just going to say never retry for this specific key. Now we are just telling use SWR that if the API endpoint is this, then don't retry on error. Just exit from this function. Just for that, we can also say here if retry count if it is greater than or equal to 10, then we are going to return or you can say exit from this function. So we are just saying that on error, try to refresh the data only 10 times. Only retry up to 10 times, not more than that. Only if there is an error in the API response. And then we can also use this revalidate to send the request again and again. For example, let's suppose that we want to retry after 5 seconds. Then we can simply say here, set timeout, call here a callback function. And here we can say revalidate. Revalidate is a type of function. So we pass here revalidate. And then we pass here an object. Inside this, we pass this recount. And then as a second argument, we pass here 5000. So this statement is going to retry after every 5 seconds. So if there is an error, this statement is going to retry and send a request to the backend after every 5 seconds. Now let's take a look at how we can use SWR configuration. The context SWR config can provide a global configuration for all SWR hooks. So if you want to configure the SWR hook, then you can just pass here comma and import the SWR config component. And you can use this component in your JSX. So let's suppose that if I use this component right here, just down here, just for the example. If I use here SWR config, something like this, then this is a valid SWR configuration. Inside this, we can pass options to this SWR hook. We can pass here value and to this value, we pass different options. And inside this option, you can pass a feature function or you can pass the refresh on interval properties. So we can refresh the API data after a specific interval and so on. Let's suppose that I want to refresh the data after every three seconds. Then I can just simply pass here an object, something like this. And then I'm going to call here refresh interval colon 3000. So this means after every three seconds, the refresh interval is going to refresh the API request. Just out of that, we can also pass here a feature function. So we can pass here a property called feature like this. And then we can pass here a function like this. And to this function, we get two properties. First is resources. So we pass here resource and second is init. So when you call this feature function, you call the fetch function, as you know, the JavaScript fetch function. And then you call here resource, the URL, and then you call the init as a second argument. And then you call here, then response is equal to response.json, something like this. So inside this SWR configuration, you can call your feature function as well. Now, let me show you a very simple example of this SWR config. So I'm going to edit this user component and I'm going to show you how you can use this SWR config and fetch the data using static site generation. You can use fallback option of SWR config to pass the prefetch data as the initial value of all SWR hook. Let me just use a simple feature function here, something like this, one line feature function. And then inside this get static props right here, as you can see, we are fetching this data from this API endpoint user. I'm going to just get this data inside these users and then call a property call fallback. Now, SWR hook is only going to use this property only when the data is updated. Otherwise, it uses the cache data. So we call here fallback and inside this, we pass the endpoint, which is API users. And then we pass here users, something like this, this one, this data. So SWR is only going to call this fallback when the data of the UI changes. Otherwise, it will use the cache data. Just out of that, when I scroll up, right inside this user component, 
we need to add the SWR config. So what I have to do is I have to create here instead of this get data, let me just get rid of this. And here I'm gonna call this component data. So right here I'm gonna copy all this code and paste that right inside this get data. And as you know, we don't have the user feature function. So here I'm gonna simply call use SWR. And then in the single code, we pass here HTTP localhost 3000 API users. And then as a second argument, we pass the feature function. So let me just get it off these destructure properties. And here I'm gonna say data and error. Instead of this is error, now we pass here error and if we don't have data then i'm going to print is loading message and just for that here instead of this user i'm going to say data that's easy right now just for that once i paste all the data inside this get data function right inside the main component right here instead of these users as you can see inside this get data i don't need user because we are getting this user from this use swr and at the top right up here i'm going to get rid of this user and here i'm going to return jsx and inside that i'm going to say swr config i'm going to call this component and pass here value and inside this value we pass fallback and just out of that i'm going to pass this fallback as a parameter and then right inside this swr config i'm going to pass my get data function this one so i can simply call here an object and here i'm going to pass get data and pass parenthesis like this let me save the changes now when i open the post user i'm going to get my response now let me tell you a very interesting thing as you all know get static props is going to generate the static html it's not going to use for frequently updated data whenever there is a change in the data of api request the get static props will automatically execute and update the data. So with the help of SWR, you can easily do that. The benefit of using get static props with SWR is the page is still pre-render. It's SEO friendly, fast to response, but also fully powered by SWR on the client side. The data can be dynamic and self-updated over time. So you don't have to worry about anything. That's the power of SWR.